know what your thoughts were on Terrence Crawford wanting to move up to face Canelo Alvarez. I mean, it's it's a good talking point. I don't know that that would really happen. Or, I mean, listen, we've seen some strange things in boxing. Don't get me wrong, especially in the recent years. So I don't I don't say never say never, but. But um, I don't know how seriously that's going to be taken. But I think when you're at a level, when you come off a big win like Crawford just did, anything you say reverberates through the sport. You think you know? Crawford could beat Canelo Alvarez. I think he's too small. But then again, I thought he was too small for Spence. So <laughs> well, shows what I know. <laughs> so, so I don't know. I, I, I think that's a lot of weight class jumping. But we'll see. Was it a low blow for Usyk, or was it a legal blow? I thought it was, I thought it was a legal blow, but the gripe I have is the ring, not not the legal blow. Because I thought you, what, I don't think that shot even lands if the ring is not wet. And people are going to be looking at me like, oh, what is he crazy? I can notice when I've said these comments to some people in in comment sections and and, and give opinions, and and I can see like they're not really getting it. There are some things in the world where you hate this, I hate to say it, but you have to have done it to understand. Boxing is to a degree that level, but boxing in a wet ring is really of that level. You don't know what you, I don't think you can understand what I'm talking, if you're disagreeing with me, you just have to go try boxing in a wet ring to understand. Your push off foot is always sliding, and your push off foot is everything. It's for defensive purposes and for offensive purposes. If you notice the shot when Usyk takes it, he's going to his right. He most likely was pushing off with his left foot, but it probably slid out, and he didn't get the push off that he needed, and he was there for the body shot. You would also notice that when Dubois goes down later in the fight his back foot slides out and he gets called a knockdown he didn't complain because he was on his way out anyway but nonetheless the, the leveraging foot you're using when it's wet it's getting on leverage it's basically instead of pushing it's putting pushing your body it's going like this you know and so your body's not really going in the direction you need it to go or at least not as explosively as you need it to move and i think there's a big argument to say that if the ring's not wet Usyk's probably not in that position to take that shot anyway so i do think it was a legal shot and i think dubois and his team have a gripe for it and i think he, they would have even more of a gripe for it but then unfortunately Dubois quit like a dog later, and so he eliminated all his gripe because now people are going to say, well, who cares, you know, because if you get this guy in a ring that's dry and, and Usyk is himself because the ring is dry and he's able to box the way he wants to, he's probably going to pummel him anyway, so no one wants to see the rematch. And by Dubois doing that, I think he hurt his own chances of getting that rematch because I think otherwise he would have had a good gripe. You've been very passionate about um, the whole anti-doping and, and everything that's going on currently. We're starting to see more and more failed drug tests. It almost feels like it's, if not every week, every other week, we're starting to get uh, news that someone else had some sort of adverse findings in their drug test. What's your thoughts on all of it? Um, I, I think, you know, some people are just failing. I, I think it's always been a problem for a, a long, long time. Um, and I think that, you know, for it to be solved, it's a multi-layered uh, solution and I don't think people even want to get started on that you know I think I think everybody's good to give you a good quote about how we got to clean up the sport and rah rah and all that but in reality um, you know the people at the top with all the money would rather this not happen because PEDs in boxing benefit their pockets, you know, because fighters can create break records, which creates more fanfare. Fighters can last longer, you know, fighters used to retire into their 30s, maybe mid-30s. Now fighters retire in their 40s, mid-40s. So PEDs allow you a lot more longevity. Um, and so you start to see uh, situations where you can create a star and instead of him aging out, you now can get another decade out of him. And that can make him a lot more money because the longer a person is a star, the more money they become val more, more worth. So, so I don't think the people lining their pockets with this care, but they'll get here, they'll come on these mics and they'll give you a great quote about how they should clean up the sport. But in reality, they, the ones with the power, will never pay for it because they, the, they have all the money and that, the, it starts at the top with all the money. It has to be paid for and nobody's going to do that. I know you, like myself, consider the UK to be like a second home by now. Yeah, yeah, it's always fun to be back, especially for big fight weeks, because the buzz is always in the air all over town. You know, nothing like a big fight in the UK, because everyone's talking about it. It's not like, you don't, you don't have to just go to a boxing gym to talk boxing. You can come across all kinds of people here, and everyone's a boxing fan. So when there's a big fight in town, everyone's talking about it. Right, so let's get straight into it. You're a busy man, and they're working your way down this line, so I, I got limited time with you. Um, let's talk about, the obviously, why we're here. Chris Eubank versus Liam Smith, the rematch. Is it repeat or revenge? Yeah, it's interesting because I think both guys can take something into the rematch, right? Liam gets the win, he got the knockout. So obviously he's going to be flying high coming, all, coming in and having knocked him out. But everybody's talking about saying end up going into the first fight, they were kind of looking for a way that Liam could win the fight. And everybody was kind of pro Eubank, right? And everybody look, was looking at Liam like he was kind of uh, damaged goods, maybe a little bit past it. And he proved to everybody what he really is, an ex-world champion who should be respected. The funny thing is now, it's, I feel like that's the way everybody's looking at Eubank. Like, oh, how does he have a chance? 
this guy was still winning almost every round of the first fight before he got knocked out. You know what I'm saying? Like he was doing he was doing very, very well until he got knocked out. So I don't understand how you can just go into the rematch now and automatically write him off when in the first fight you were you were considering him as a short shot. So I think there's adjustments to be made from both sides. I think from, from the part of Liam Smith, I think the adjustment is physical because you can't just bank on losing early part of the fight and then getting lightning in a bottle and knocking a guy out, right? Because you're going to put yourself behind the eight ball. And Liam is a slow starter, don't get me wrong, but Eubank will gain more and more confidence. And from Eubank's perspective, the adjustment, I think, is mental because he has to stay disciplined even if he's having success early in the fight. And that's been the, th the problem with Eubank is the inconsistency. Liam, be having been a world-class fighter, having been a world champion, understands the importance of consistency throughout a fight, understands the importance of actually building throughout a fight. Eubank seems to sometimes get a, get a, come out of his shell a little bit. He'll have moments where he looks great and moments where he looks like, what is he doing? You know, And, and he, you cannot afford that at a high level. And Liam Smith proved that. So for, 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 for Eubank, the adjustment, I think, is mental. I think there's a lot he can take out of the first fight. He was winning the first fight. He was doing well. Some from a physical perspective, he knows he has the gifts and he has the tools. Chris has called this or called the shot a miracle shot. I mean, again, he's got to say that. He's got to convince himself of that. Uh, is it sort of lightning in a bottle? Kind of. I mean, Liam Smith is not known as that big of a puncher to the point where you're knocking out a guy like that who's never been knocked out before, right? I mean, Liam's, Eubank was known as having a good chin, never been knocked out before. Liam was known as a respectable puncher, but not a guy who you would think would take out a guy in that fashion that has never been knocked out before and had shown himself to have a good chin. So, should Eubank talk about that it's a miracle shot? Should Eubank convince himself that it was lightning in a bottle? I think so. He has to. He has to say that, you know? How's he going to How's he going to live with himself going into the second fight? And Smith, to a degree, has to believe that, no, I, I did hurt him like that. I, I can punch like that. But Smith still has to kind of also believe that I can't allow myself to be put behind the eight ball again and then have to rely on a punch like that against a guy who's been difficult to knock out all the time. But then there's the last factor, and the last factor is this. You're coming in off a knockout loss, there's a little bit of doubts in your mind sometimes. Or it, it lingers back there. So if Smith lands another big shot, Eubank is usually reliable. But is he going to have flashbacks of the shot that hurt him? So this is why we have to have the rematch. Because there's so many talking points here. And we really can't answer them. Because then you also need to be a psychiatrist. Because everybody comes into coming off a knockout loss. Everybody comes in a little bit differently psychologically. And you know... I'm not a psychiatrist, I'm not a psychologist, whichever one applies here, but so therefore all of these intangibles make the fight worth it because you really don't know which way you can, you can always pick something that you think for your, for the pick you want to take, oh, I think I'm going to take this and I'm going to say this guy's going to win, or right, you can take that and take the other guy's going to win, so you know what, we're not going to find out until fight night. Manny Pacquiao has actually just said the other day, has shown interest in wanting to compete in the 2024 Paris Olympics, what are your thoughts on, on him wanting to do that? Ah, I don't know, man. That's uh, that's interesting too. I don't know. I don't know. I mean, do you I, find that fair that that pros are now able to compete? I mean, I I, I still think that a world class amateur in that format is better than a pro because I've, a world class amateur in that format has been winning at a high high level in that format of a few rounds, while a world class pro has been kind of extending himself through twelve rounds and his pace has become different over the course of his career. Um, but Manny was always a guy who fought at a fast pace. Even though he was 100, he still fought at a fast pace somehow. But I won't say anything about that. So, so I mean, so I don't know. I mean, it's interesting uh, because you know a fast pace does benefit you in the amateurs. Uh, and people say, oh, is it fair? But how many of the pros actually won Olympic medals? I mean, and, and ultimately the pros in that format don't really do well because the amateurs you're fighting in the Olympics are not just amateurs. I mean, they're legitimately world-class amateur fighters who basically could turn pro and become mid to high-level contenders right away.